So this period, this PowerPoint is all about learning how to use the table of reduction potentials and start to get a clue about how to figure out what reactions are happening. So this chart, what you'll see is oxidizing agents are listed down the left and they go from strong oxidizing agents to weak. So strong ones, they want to react, they want to change. Weak ones don't want to change. And reducing agents, it's the reverse. The strongest reducing agents are down here and the weakest are up here. We're going to be looking on the next slide at spontaneity. Anytime the oxidizing agent on the right is above the reducing agent on the left, it's a spontaneous reaction, positive voltage. Anytime the oxidizing agent on the left is below the reducing agent on the right, we get a negative voltage and we get a non-spontaneous reaction. Non-spontaneous means you mix those chemicals, they won't react. So, Forward reactions are always reduction on this chart, and you just grab the voltage the way it's written. If you need an oxidation reaction from the chart, it's the reverse reaction, and you flip the sign. So if it had a positive voltage, it becomes negative. If it becomes negative, it changes to positive. That's for oxidation. Reduction, you just take it the way it comes. So if you look at things like fluorine going being reduced, that's plus 2.47 volts, and fluoride being oxidized would be minus 2.47 volts. So that's the kind of thing we're after in that case. If we have a redox reaction, we get a positive voltage overall, it occurs spontaneously. And that's why I was talking about higher, the oxidizing agent being higher in the chart, and the reducing agent. So bromine and lead, you look at bromine, and you'll find that's a reduction, so we just grab the 1.09 volts. Now we look for lead. We're going to find lead in this form with no charge on the right, so that means it's a reducing agent. Now when we look at lead, normally it says minus 0.13 volts, but because we flip this around, now it's an oxidation, the negative 0.13 becomes plus 0.13. So to get the overall cell potential, we just take that number, add that number to it, and we'll get our redox reaction. And adding those numbers, it tells us it's 1.22 volts. The bromine was above the lead. The bromine on the left was above the PB on the right. And we have a positive voltage, so this is spontaneous. We mix those things together, they're going to react. That's what spontaneous means. Now, let's look at an example where it's the opposite of that. So now we have a negative cell potential. It is not going to occur spontaneously. And that's any time the oxidizing agent's below the reducing agent. So it's sloped diagonally like this. Spontaneous, like this. Non-spontaneous, like that on the chart. So sodium plus and silver. Now this one turns out to be fairly obvious because sodium plus is actually stable. Sodium metal, very reactive. Reacts with water, make hydrogen, can blow up. Silver is quite happy the way it is. So this is definitely going to be a non-spontaneous BC. You're going to find sodium way down near the bottom of the chart. And that's why it has that strongly negative voltage of 2.71 volts, negative. Silver is going to be plus 0.80 volts, except we're oxidizing it, so that plus becomes minus. We're going to take those two numbers, minus 2.71, we're going to add minus 0.80, we're going to get more negative. and we get minus 3.51 volts. And when we look at the chart there, located like this, sodium way down on the left, silver quite a ways up on the right, and that's a definitely a non-spontaneous position. So the reaction does not occur. Not occur means non-spontaneous. Now, if we look at these beasts, you can use your chart and you have gold and copper and tin and magnesium and the charges matter. And we'd be looking at tin 2 plus versus Cu 2 plus. And we want to say, hey, does that happen? 
Well, Cu2 plus is above Sn2 plus. So it means this is the stronger oxidizing agent. In fact, it wants to drive the reaction to the left. If we looked at the position of Sn2 plus and Cu, we would see it's in a non-spontaneous position. Favors reactants. That's what non-spontaneous means. Now in the textbook, there's some data and it looks like this. It turns out it's very easy to rate these things. What you'd have to understand up here is that these are oxidizing agents, so we can rank them like that. And these three chemicals are reducing agents. And if we look at their positions, we can figure out on the chart how they want to react, but it turns out it's even easier. If I look at iodide, we don't care about iodide and iodide. That's why it's sort of not applicable there. But iodide and bromine react, and iodide and chlorine react. So that tells us that iodide is the strongest reducing agent. That means it would be the lowest on the right. We see that bromine reacts with chlorine, but not iodine. And that means bromine would be the second strongest reducing agent. And chlorine, would, or the chloride ion, would come in in last place because it doesn't react with any of these things. Well, if we know the order is reducing agents, it's going to be the reverse order is oxidizing agents. When we look at chlorine, chlorine is going to be way up on the left on our table of reduction potentials, and it reacts with bromide and iodide. So chlorine is number one. Bromine, again, is in the middle, so it reacts with iodide, but it does not react with chlorine. And iodine, we had the iodide was the strongest reducing agent, so iodine is the weakest oxidizing agent, and it doesn't react with any of those things. And so that's what our data is saying there. We can compare these things in this form. We see bromine is weaker than chlorine, it's oxidizing agent. And we can see bromine is stronger than iodine as an oxidizing agent. And we can see chlorine outpowered iodine. So as oxidizing agents, that's what we're talking about. The chlorine beats the bromine, beats the iodine. And as reducing agents, it goes in the reverse order, but notice the formula matters. Here, these happen to be elements. They're in the higher oxidation state. These are all ions. They're in the lower oxidizing st ox oxidation state. And those things we've got to get used to. So you'll get questions like that. This is one of the trickier things you face, but uh, with practice, it won't be a problem. So, reminder about you do have a textbook, some pages to read and some charts to interpret and things that we will discuss.